At the first youth march, we had a kiss in, and there are photographs, which I've just been sent, of me kissing various guys in, in Hyde Park. And uh, people think we were being fl uh, flippant, but actually the sentence for that kind of behavior could have been between five and seven years in prison. My early years were in America. I was born in the States uh, from Jamaican parents who divorced when I was about five or six years old. Uh, my mother had been involved in the um, NAACP, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, which spun off into the civil rights movement. I was becoming aware that I was attracted to partic one particular boy in school. And when I was about 12 or 13, I remember waking up in a, in a sweat because I'd had a dream in which we were not very sexual, but more than just friends and rom romantic. And I kind of worried that this was an indication that I was going to turn into what we then called sissy. And so I came out to my mother uh, because I needed to talk to somebody about it. And I knew that she wouldn't attack me because of the kind of person that she is. But in fact, it was even more positive than I expected because when she had been in the civil rights movement in America, one of the speakers who spoken to her about the civil rights movement was Bayard Rustin, um, who was the organizer um, of the great um, civil rights march at which Martin Luther King gave his I Have a Dream speech. You can find a quote of Baird Rustin saying in 1964, oh sorry, 63, which is six years before Stonewall, that one day homosexual people would be fighting for their rights, the same as, um, as black people were. I was uh, helped uh, organize the first, the first two marches um, through central London. The first one was the 1971, the Youth March, sorry, the Gay Liberation Front Youth March in protest against the unequal age of consent laws. At the first Youth March, we had a kiss in, and there are photographs, which I've just been sent, of me kissing various guys in, in Hyde Park. And uh, people think we were being fl uh, flippant, but actually the sentence for that kind of behavior could have been between five and seven years in prison. But we decided to challenge the police on the grounds that doing so publicly uh, would show the public the, the kind of hostility and homophobia that we were facing. Those first few years of, of activism um, were just a reflection of what my mother had already been through in the civil rights movement because one of the things that people don't realize is that the civil rights movement was not a single issue campaign. It was about getting justice for workers, for women's rights, for um, homeless people, all sorts of categories. It wasn't simply about overturning the racist segregation laws in America. And in fact, the British branch of the Gay Liberation Front was kind of launched by the Black Panther Party when they set up the Revolutionary People's Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia in 1970, when Huey Newton, who was the commander of the Black Panthers, argued and wrote a letter, a public letter, saying that um, we should all work together and that gay people were not the enemies of the people. And in fact, many gay people could be even more revolutionary than black people. In 1982, I think it was, or 81, um, some young people were having a birthday party and they insist that some white person stuck um, oily, a lit oily rag through the letterbox and set the house on fire and 13 teenagers died in the fire, and the police didn't investigate it properly, right? So they set up an organization called Lewisham Action on Policing, 
for the black community to liaise with the police and try to Im impel them to respond on a you know fairer basis. This is years before St um, Stephen Lawrence, yeah. And so I went and worked for Lewisham Exxon Policing for ten years, uh, but I also had a gay uh, department in Lewisham Exxon Policing, and I was out an out black activist in Lewisham Exxon Policing. And it was while there that I appeared on the Word TV program in response to Buju Banton's record, Boom Bye Bye, advocating that uh, gay people should be shot and killed by uh, machine guns and all the rest of it. Just around that same time, Justin Fashnew was discovered by the Sun newspaper to, to be gay. The Voice newspaper came out very, very strongly against Justin. Uh, now, Justin was a very successful footballer. I think he was either the first, he was certainly the first black footballer to be worth a million pounds in 1990. And they did a headline articles um, featuring Ju Justin's brother saying, my brother is an outcast, it's shameful that he's gay, and so on and so forth. So we went for The Voice, had a year-long campaign, a boycott, and won a right of reply, um, which I think was very successful. The Voice started having gay adverts and so on. That was very successful. Black lesbians and gays against media homophobia. I still got some of their posters, but we existed before online communication. So you won't find us online, but I still have copies of our documents and the letters of support that we have, I have a whole folder. Well, we've become aware of, of two factors. Uh, the, the first one is that the early Gay Liberation Front paid very little attention to older people, um, very similar to the rest of society. Unfortunately, once you reach a certain age in this culture, you're almost invisible. And we've become aware of severe problems in the care um, community and the care facilities in this country. The needs and the emotions and the self-identity of LG, elder LGBT people are as valid and as essential as those for young people. And we shouldn't abandon those people when they wind up in care facilities that do not um, cater for them. My opinion of the LGB Alliance and their attacks on tr trans community is surprise and disappointment. I'm also surprised and shocked by the, the vehemence of their, their, their attacks. Um, they don't just criticize trans people, they seem to hate them. And hatred is not a, a feature of any progressive um, rights campaign. LGBT pride um, used to mean a determination by people in the LGBT community to support each other and to support others in their self-identity, in their search for rights. What's happened is Pride has unfortunately become a commercial celebration with almost no f focus on the, the need for rights within this country or abroad where um, LGBT people are suffering considerable, considerable abuse and need support. The message I would like people to take from my Pride Award is that individual action is extremely important. Uh, in the same way that prejudice and hostility is inflicted by individuals to individuals and collectively turns into a serious social problem, so too um, action and su in support of human rights on an individual basis has an effect on society as a whole. And an example I would give is from what happened with George Floyd. It was the action of that young woman keeping the camera 
on Derek Chauvin and George Floyd for nine minutes that led to the Black Lives Matter movement, to the publicity and the outrage of the general population, and for once actually caused a police officer to be taken to account for the brutality that was being inflicted on the black community.